our team went to a protest about trans rights. They went over to one of the people who was most profoundly present, let's say, shouting and whatever. And they said, can you tell us what this is about? What it, what it? And she said, no. So how, if you're protesting for something, why wouldn't you want to persuade a single person what you actually believe in? It, it's become very kind of so tribal. And so, you know, here's my placard and here's your placard that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of battle of ideas going on as so much battle of power. Um, but I wrote a piece on my Substack, uh, actually on the plane back. I couldn't sleep, so I just typed it out on my phone, which is called the, the American Anti-Woke Coalition. And I talk about the split between the conservatives uh, and the old school liberals about some of these issues. And it's a very interesting dynamic because I think the, the, the path to uh, addressing many of these progressive, radical progressive ideas lies through uniting conservatives and the old school liberals around the things that they all agree on. The problem is, you know, the, the, the conservatives in America, you know, America is a very radical country. It's a very radical country. When we spoke to Ben Shapiro, actually, he made this point, and I think he's absolutely right. People there are pretty, you know, pretty intense about what they believe, and so it makes them difficult, makes it difficult for them to work with others where there's disagreement, you know. And the, the trans debate, for example, is a very good example of this, where the conservatives, many conservatives, have taken the position that I think alienates a lot of people, which is, you know, the libs are transing the kids, and everything else follows from that. And a lot of the old school liberals who also are, are concerned about gender ideology in schools, the transitioning of children, the medicalization of children, all of this stuff, they're quite uncomfortable with some of that rhetoric. And so what you see is a rather precarious temporary alliance that's not really as strong as it could be and, and some of the fissures that come from that. Um, but um, America is a beautiful place. Uh, it's a beautiful place, I think, I am really inspired by um, the mindset there. You know, the, the, there is no tall poppy syndrome in America. You know, if you say to somebody in Britain, you know, I want to build a great business, or I want to create a massive YouTube channel, or I want to be, you know, hugely successful in this or that, there's a sort of like, who do you think you are kind of look that you get. In America, it isn't like that at all. It's like, great, go for it. What can I do for you? How can we work together? And that's inspiring. You know, that is, this, for someone like me who always wanted to do great things and build things and employ people and create opportunities for others and make an impact in the world, it's, it's fascinating. It also has a shadow, as anything does. There are no solutions, only trade-offs. Uh, but it's, it's a wonderful place in many ways. I, I really, when I'm in America, I am, it gives me like fuel for the rocket in, in a way that no other country I've ever been to does.